and welcome to Nuts on Cars. I'm James and my dad Frank is behind the camera and we've decided to start a YouTube channel, channel to bring you content on what we love about cars. Um, so firstly I'd like to introduce you to our what we call our current stable. We have a 2014 991 Gen 1 Carrera 4S manual and that's Frank's. We have a 2012 2.7 981 Boxster uh, which is mine. Um, we also have a 2015 Mazda MX-5 2.0-litre Sport Nav, um, which is my stepmom Claire's. And then we also have Dad's, what he calls a, a daily driver, which is a 2015 uh, BMW M4 uh, uh, DCT. So stay tuned for what we have in store for these, things like um, our experience in terms of owning these cars, cost of ownership, what we like and dislike about each individual car, um, comparing them directly against each other um, and then just anything you guys want to see really so stay tuned We've been messing around getting the videos all wrong Claire's now late for her hair appointment so she's got to shoot So now we've got a gap on the drive because Claire's ruined our perfect photo opportunity to go and get a haircut uh, but what we'd really like to talk to you about is the two Porsches, which is what me and Dad Frank are most passionate about, should we say. So um, the main things we'd like to talk to you about is that the cost of ownership of owning a Porsche doesn't have to be that bad. Um, you can almost sometimes make a little bit of money uh, if you play the market right. Obviously, some, certain circumstances you will lose money, but we think having owned 12 between us and, and not doing too badly over the years, we can bring you some knowledge and expertise in terms of uh, actually running these cars for similar to what you can run a normal day-to-day -day car. So firstly I'd like to give you a brief introduction to the uh, 991. So Dad bought this from Porsche Solihull uh, in January. So that includes a two-year warranty um, and it's a 2014 say Gen 1 Carrera 4S in manual form. So that's rather rare uh, and there's not many people anymore that, that want a manual put together with a Carrera 4S. So it's, uh, it's an interesting one. It's finished in white and we have, it gets more interesting, so we have quite a uh, Marmite, should we say, interior, which is officially called Espresso Cognac, which is a, an upgrade um, where you get softer leather, and then you've also got, this one's got ventilated, heated and cooled seats. Um, so. At first, we were concerned as to whether it would be a bit of a, a, a sticking point when we come to sell it, but actually, it's, it's grown on us and it seems to get a good reception and potentially coming back into fashion slightly. So um, the best thing about it is the fact that it's got the, the two-tone dash, uh, which really breaks it up. Um, and you don't get that reflection off the dash onto the windscreen, which can sometimes affect visibility. So um, personally, we think it looks great. Uh, we like to say it's kind of like a Dubai spec uh, and it seems, to, it seems to work and it gets a, it's a lot of big head turner. So uh, coming around the back, obviously with it being 4S, you get the tail light across the middle. This has got the sports exhaust, so you get the four exhausts uh, over, the, over the back. Now this car did also come with a colour-coded sill underneath, but actually uh, there was a little bit too much white going on, so Dad's actually fitted the, the black plastic. Wheel-wise, it's got the 20-inch uh, alloy wheels, which were obviously an option. And then it's also got things like bows, panoramic glass roof, tinted rear window, rather not just not the back ones, which I think again, tinted rear windows on a Porsche don't, don't particularly look good. So, and then colour coding wise, obviously when they ordered it, it was they loved obviously white because this, all this should actually come standard with black plastic. But and then the front splitter as well was also white. It just needed a bit of breaking up and it looks a lot more aggressive and it actually sticks out further so it gives it a bit more presence. So that's the sort of quick overview of the 991. This video kind of would like to go over a bit more detail on the Boxster which I bought a month ago privately so it was on Piston Heads. Uh, I sent it a link to dad at 11 o'clock on the Tuesday night. On the Wednesday we drove it to Teesside and we came back with a lovely one owner full service history with Porsche. Uh, Boxster 2.7. So it's only doing 14,000 miles. 
Um, it needed a little bit of cleaning. It had been parked outside. It hadn't been used much. The brakes were um, extremely, there was a lot of vibration from the brakes on the way home. So I was a bit concerned. We bought a bit of a, a duff one and it needed a new set of dis and pads, but it all worked out fine. Just needed a bit of driving. So spent a lot of time cleaning the hood and that's come up really well. And it's overall, it's just in, it's a bit dirty at the moment, but it's in lovely condition. And again, I think this is uh, kind of the, the message we want to get across in terms of if you buy one of these privately and buy it right, and it's a nice car, this really is where you can probably uh, get a, a kind of good return, or not return on your money, but avoid that depreciation cost. So options wise, this is a very basic car. It's got standard wheels. It's black with Luxor beige, I believe they call it interior. Now the only problem with this is it hasn't got the two-tone, so there is a lot of beige in there, um, which isn't to everyone's cup of tea again, but it's, uh, it's okay, and it's been looked after, so it's lovely and clean. Uh, options wise, it's got heated seats and a wind deflector, and I believe that's it. <laughs> again, as this is just a brief introduction to the ownership of, of the Boxster for the last month. I just wanted to kind of talk through three things that kind of been the best things uh, for the, that I've found out. So the first one I think is worth talking about. The Boxster actually wasn't a spec that I would pick. It's, uh, it's, it's not an S, so to me that's not the most exciting. And it's pretty basic, so um, it was kind of just based on the fact that it was a nice low mileage car that we went for it. But actually, as, as a car, the engine is Probably one of the most exciting engines I think I've ever driven. Uh, it's not hasn't got the most torque in the world, so it's not punchy mid-range. But when it wind, winds around, oh my god, it's uh, it's sublime. So that's been the most uh, sort of pleasant, surprising thing that, uh, that I've found out. Second thing is the look of the car, even though it is on the standard wheels. Uh, I think the lines, and especially from front on. It's, I've never had a car that again has had so much attention so that's been again a pleasant surprise for a basic car and then just the premium feel and and day, how easy day-to-day -day driving is in in the car and how refined it is and then it even does 40 to the gallon if you try really hard on it on a long run so again it comes back to the cost of ownership uh, that to me is kind of the same as every other car on the road so um, yeah it's been it's been a good month so to anyone who thinks a 2.7 standard Boxster isn't very exciting, needs to drive one of these. So um, around the top of the rev range, it's one of the most exciting cars I've ever driven. So that was just a general brief overview of, uh, of the Boxster. Uh, hope you liked it. Like, share, subscribe, uh, and we'll have some more in-depth reviews of the cars we've uh, given you a brief overview of in the next one.